there are thousands of people that do not do social media. And so I make it a point in finding people that's not on social media to email them a book and say, mm. read this book for me. Because we just assume, because in this day and time, that everyone is on social media. That's not true. You have book groups that's not on social media. I make it, I have a list uh, from all 50 states of book groups. I make it my business to send emails to them to introduce myself. And then I send an email to introduce my author. And I ask wow. them to do this book, you know, read this book. Can this be your book of the month? And some may say yes, and some may say, we'll get to it. We can't do it right now. And that's fine, too, because I understand, you know, you have a book list that you're going to, but as long as they read the book. So I, I, I make a point of doing that. I make a point of reaching out to um, different groups that's not book groups, like, for instance, um, interracial. Mm-hmm. When you send me a message and say, can you get me a couple more reviews, it's not always coming from um, book groups. I will I excuse me. I am a part of or a member of three thousand groups, and they're not all book groups, but there are people that I can reach out to. Mm-hmm. So we have interracial groups that I reach out to and say, "Are there any readers in this group?" And you'll be amazed of, of the amount of readers that's in these groups that actually don't participate in Facebook groups. Wow! And so I get them to read a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is amazing. And that's how I get some reviews. Yeah, that is good. I think that's information that we all need to hear because so much of our life as authors um, center around social media. And and Mm -hmm. in some ways we become dependent on it for our business. But you're right, before social media, we would not be dependent on just our social media groups, our circles right. to build our audience. So, you know, this is a wonderful reminder. It is for me. I don't know. It might be different for Lisa, but it's definitely a, a reminder for me to broad the way I think about connecting with readers and not just readers who are on social media because that is also a unique niche. Not everybody wants, you know, a social media account or to be on social media, but they still love books. Exactly. And you have to remember you have to remember that age group that's sixty five and older that still read romance novels but don't want to be bothered with technology. Still go to the stores and buy their books. Mm Mhm. So Absolutely. you have to have a way to reach that. You have to have a way to reach that audience as well. And so that's what I try to do. I try to spend most of my time connecting with different groups in order to bring in those reviews for my for my. Office. I don't just depend on Facebook for those or social mm-hmm. media platforms. Period. Wow, makes sense. Now, after this interview, I am positive that you are going to get a lot more authors. Coming to you and asking for help. <laughs> well, actually, Lisa, I I have no more slots available at the present time. I'm thanking that God that I thank God that um, He has put me in a position where I can say, nope, I I I cannot accept it more. Because I remember when I first started, I was not getting any sleep. I was I had like twenty authors at one time trying to promote them, and when you have twenty authors. And see, my thing is I do 30 groups a day for each author. Then I may come back and do 10 more that night. So that's 40 Mm -hmm. groups that I have put you in for that day. Then I send out emails to all of the um, groups that I have, you know, made contact with through email to get your book out to them. And so I was not getting any sleep. So I I couldn't do that plus minute, so I had to cut back on on accepting um, authors for promoting, and I will not accept any more authors for management because when you get too big, someone falls in the loop. And right now I want to keep it um, as intimate as possible because I want the ones I'm working with to succeed. And when you start bringing in too many people, you can't focus on the weak spots of everyone. And so I need to be able to focus on the weak spots of my authors. What are you doing or what are we doing? It's not that it's a team. What are we doing that's not reaching the readers? What are we doing that these readers don't want to read this book? And so I can't do that if I bring in too many people. 
Right, okay. right. That that makes sense. Look at you that answering makes... my question before I could get it out. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I know, that... I love it. <laughs> no, I do too. So you, I know this is crazy, but you know I have to ask. So you came from <laughs> healthcare into um, um, writing. How did yes. you learn so much so quickly about how to really, really engage with not just the creative, the author, but ultimately the consumer of the work, the reader? Where do you think that came from? Well, I think all fields kind of in some way or form, Sierra, merged together. Mm-hmm. Having a master's in psychology, working with all types of um, personalities, Mm-hmm. It, it just falls over because when you're working with all these different personalities when I was in HIV and you have to find that niche that works for each person so I brought that over with me what is my niche how can I reach these people and so I, I sat and I you know went through different ideas it took me a moment to get where I am because I tried this I tried different things before I found something that actually works that's getting reviews for for the reader, for my authors. So I just took what I learned in the corporate world and brought it over here and to the reading world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Okay. It's hmm. great that you can transition from one career path to another without missing a, a beat. I'm not going to say that, Lisa. It took me a moment. I, I, it took me a moment because I was angry and I wasn't allowing myself to be my, 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 to, to allow myself to let myself be fully engulfed in what I was doing because I was angry that I gave you all these years and I become sick and you find a way to tell me you don't want me anymore. But then I had to stop and think I have a child in college and my anger is not going to pay her bills. So I had to come up with something that was going to work for me because eventually the savings was going to run out. So I had to come up with something <laughs> to keep us going. So I had to let I had to let the anger go and start mm-hmm. focusing on what was more important, and that was me and my child. Yeah. Wow. Oh, goodness. I'm learning so much tonight. I really am. I'm so glad we had you um, come on the show. And I have to ask you, um, I got so many questions written down. I'm like, look at all these notes on this page. Um, I want everybody to see it because it's kind of messy. But how do you how do you decide which authors you should work with? What's that assessment piece, that analysis piece, where you say yes One to some and maybe no to others? Some is how hungry are you? How bad do you want it? Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that I look at when, I, when I'm when i talking with the author to come under the Negro with LLC. How bad do you want this? How focused are you on this? Because for some people, it's a hobby, and that's fine. And if it's a hobby, then you don't need what I do because it's just a hobby. But if it's someone that's trying to take this to a point where this is their income, then I need to know how bad you want it, how hungry are you, because I'm going to work as as hard as possible and pray as hard as possible to get you to that level. Mm -hmm. But you have to help me get you there, so you have to want it. Do you want this? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And you have to be a team player. If it's always about you, 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 then Mm -hmm. we're not going to be a great team. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I, I will, you know, like I, mean, I don't think that we're going to work. And speaking of teamwork, do your authors interact together, the ones that yes. you work with? Yes, they do. They promote each other, and we have team meetings to find out what's going on. And again, that's um, what we call SWAT, where we're deter- determining what's your sweet, what are your weak points, what are your strong points. And where Mm -hmm. this author may be weak, this author may be strong. So then they can team up and work together to give this author skills where they need to be. So, yes, they definitely interact with each other. That's that's one of the Mm -hmm. things that um, I I put out there. You know, if you can't work with us, if you can't be a team, then you can't be be here. Because it's not a competition. 
But right. yeah, again, as I said, the, play, the, the table is set. All of us can eat. So it's not a competition. I love that. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. you'll find some sometimes in, in corporations and other agencies, they want to pit each other, pit their authors against each other, or at least drive competition to make the maximum profit. And I love that you say that we're in it together and there's no competition there. No, yeah. no competition. When one wins, we all win. We celebrate as a team. When yeah. Sonya B gets the, gets the banner, we celebrate. When the, when another author gets the banner, we celebrate because we're a team. Yeah. That means all of us put in an effort to make this work. And I cannot stand lazy authors. That's another thing. If you think right. you're going to come on board and do nothing, then that doesn't work for me either. Because yes. if we're going to do yes. all the work for you, we don't need you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so with our last four minutes, and this interview has gone by really fast, and I'm and I'm and I'm happy and I'm sad <laughs> at the <laughs> at the same time because it's it's a wealth of information. But I have to ask you: if you could tell an author one thing beyond writing a great book to build their business, what would that be? Stay humble. Mm-hmm. Stay humble. I have, as a reader, before I got into this business, I have reached out to authors. The attitudes were horrible, and I never bought another book. Mm. Wow. So I always tell my authors, stay humble. I'm not saying that you you have the time to respond to every single person, which I try to for them. I try to respond to anyone that says anything to them. Because I want them to know we appreciate them. We appreciate them spending their money. We appreciate them reading the book. We, we appreciate their time. But stay humble. Because you are you become a household name today, tomorrow you could be forgotten. Stay humble. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. I, I agree wholeheartedly with you. Now, I know you've mentioned one of your authors, and I want to give you the opportunity to mention um, your other authors. So if there's other authors that you want to mention that um, that you manage and you want to promote their work, please take this time now to mention those authors. Thank you, Sierra. Yes. As <laughs> Frost, um, the game, one and two, please pick that up. And of course, Sonia B, I mentioned her. She has the um, Savant Brothers and Friends, but she also writes paranormal books as well. She has a Social Eat series out. Um, R.K. Written, she has Beautiful Disaster Out as we speak. Um, Fina Wright, uh, she also has um, The King and I Out at present. And then um, mm-hmm. I have a uh, author that I'm um, not managing but kind of mentoring to a little, and I'll call his name Morocco um, Steele. He has a book coming out as well. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join us here on Women on Words. I hope that you or um, your authors will come back and talk with our audience. We want to hear more about what you all are doing. Of course, I want to commend you on the wonderful work you are doing in our industry, um, being a businesswoman, a woman of color, a woman of integrity. I so appreciate you. what you bring um, to the publishing industry uh, on our behalf, always bringing us quality books and introducing us to new authors. So I want to thank you for joining us on the show. Um, thank you, Lisa for being here tonight, author (laughs) Ella Wren. And until next time, y'all be amazing, be awesome, be wow. Ladies, have a wonderful night. Thank Thank you, you. Sierra. Thank you, Unique. Thank you. And ladies, please go get Tennessee's Whiskey. I love that book. (laughs) Yes, Ella Wren's Tennessee Whiskey. Please go get that. And uh, y'all know Messy Mandy presents the Lunchtime Chronicles. The cover reveals are starting on next Monday, uh, September 7th. So you definitely want to be on Messy Mandy's Facebook page for the fun and the 